Well, we talk about the crisis in eastern Ukraine now, still red hot despite a deal reached in Geneva to reduce tensions. Pro-Russian insurgents rejecting the agreement and refusing to lay down their weapons or leave government buildings. So what's the next step for the United States and Ukraine as the showdown drags on with Russian troops still near the border? Let's bring in Stephen Yates, a former deputy assistant to Vice President Cheney for National Security Affairs. Stephen, good of you to join us. Hi, Kelly. Great to be with you. You know, you look at the situation at the Ukraine and, and you constantly watch it unravel, 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 even going back to the early days of Crimea. What's happening here? Is the United States being played by Russia's President Vladimir Putin? Well, the West, I think, in general, faces a dilemma here. Either Russia is responsible for what's happening in the Ukraine, and it is clearly not helping, or Russia is not the responsible party. It's the separatists acting in an independent fashion, in which case the recent deal is pointless because the relevant party wasn't at the table for the negotiations. I think when we look at the evidence to date, Vladimir Putin has done nothing to take responsibility for escalating, if not outright instigating the current crisis by violating a 1994 agreement and taking the Crimea. I think the evidence is strongly on the side that Putin is supporting these forces and has done nothing to delegitimize their cause or to say that Russia won't accept new territories and these people should stand down. Well, that leads me to my next question, because when you see the boldness of this particular group, is calling itself the Donetsk, the Donetsk People's Republic, and they're basically vowing that they will not leave because they do not recognize the current government in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Having said that, though, they have to be getting support from somewhere. And, and, and would that be Russia? Well, it certainly would be from Russia, and it's maybe questionable whether it's coming direct from the government. There could be non-government organizations ranging from anywhere from organized crime to other well-meaning entities within Russia that would be giving cross-border support. But given that we can see with our own eyes a large force amassed by Russia at this border, it seems implausible that, there, that the gov Russian government has no role whatsoever right. in providing material support to these separatists. So, Stephen, what options does the West have at this point? Do, do they take a military option, perhaps sending troops into Poland? Well, I think at first we have to acknowledge that the limited measures taken to date have not altered Putin's calculus and have not put the government in Kiev in a better position to basically help itself. I think we should reject extreme options like leading with a military intervention or just sitting back and pretending as if it doesn't matter. I think we have a strategic interest in Europe serving its own needs and taking care of its own neighbors. And we should play a supporting role in providing non-lethal but also lethal support to Kiev because the people that they are opposed to certainly are not constrained. Uh, that maybe is focused more on law enforcement primarily uh, since rule of law clearly is a problem and then economic reconstruction, rehabilitation, which I think is a close second. For you know, you raise a very good point to... and, and, and Senator John McCain even said so much that he was very disappointed in President Obama for the way that they have responded to what's going on in Ukraine and has gone so far as to say that the president or the United States should at least be providing some defensive weapons for the people of Ukraine so that they can enforce the law and protect themselves against these separatist groups. But yeah, we haven't done that. I, that's right. And I think basically we regrettably have been overly polarized by the politics of the last decade, thinking only about Iraq or not Iraq. Uh, when there are a lot of middle ground options, I think, that are very relevant to helping build the capacity of the interim government in Kiev. And I think that Europe, first and foremost, has a main interest at stake and credibility at stake in protecting its own borders and its own allies. We should be in a supporting role in that, but we should be encouraging them to take this more seriously, and maybe we should be supporting them in their efforts to help these guys protect themselves. Before I let you go, does it alarm you that uh, this pamphlet went out talking about Jewish people living in that region need to register or they face expulsion from that area? Well, I can't possibly know of the source of the credibility of the document, but I can say categorically in all instances those are, those are ins insulting, inflammatory, and inappropriate kinds of messages. And we know that in that part of the world, the neo-Nazi organizations and those kind of sentiments are not gone, and unfortunately they're not gone in many other areas. So I think we should reject them, and we should be concerned about a lawless environment allowing those kinds of elements to spread and take advantage. Mm -hmm.
Stephen, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem, and uh, the United States and the West has to determine what they're going to do about it, if they can. Uh, Stephen Yates, we thank you for your insights. Thank you, Kelly. Okay.